All right, so welcome to another episode of Leo's Logic, and I'm going to be covering the MSI debacle as well as consequent player outrage that came as a result of it. Now, with the recent announcement of the Paladins game mid-season invitational crossplay LAN event for 2019, the landscape of the console scene feels like it's fracturing beneath us. PCL professionals, some of which who have represented the game for months going on to years, have dedicated a vast quantity of both time and effort in order to perfect their craft and play the game at the highest available level for console. As such, it was a shocking blow when the Summer Console Wars LAN event was scrapped entirely for the MSI event, especially since the original notice declared that it would not be impacted. High res and Skillshot also declared prizing for the PCL teams would not be detrimentally affected with the introduction of the MSI event. However, the format of the tournament ensures that there are far more hurdles for console teams to overcome should they wish to get any monetary reward for their dedication and performance. While the outrage is certainly understandable, I want to review the choices that high res Skillshot have made up until this point, how it affects the community, and also highlight some of the complications that exist within the solutions that they think they're proposing. So let's get to the root of the outrage. During the original mid-season invitational announcement, high res and Skillshot marketed the MSI LAN event as one of three things. One is the opportunity for PCL teams to test their medal against the PC Elite and elevate overall competitiveness. All right. The second thing is they classified it as a cross-play LAN event uh, for which PCL players can earn additional prizing, right? So this would imply that prizing would not be affected otherwise. And to boot, they go on to say that uh, there are zero detrimental effects on prizing for console in general. All right. And then lastly, we were reaffirmed that there would be no changes to console wars related events, as I had mentioned before. Now, here are the primary issues, right? It stems from the two declarations that are made in defense of the console scene. No detriment to prizing and not doing away with Paladin's console wars events. So we're going to focus on the second one first. Naturally, we were later told that the Summer Console Wars LAN event would be canceled entirely with the crossplay being the only event for the mid-season. To me, this flip-flop, this reneg right here, because that's what it is. They initially said there wouldn't be any uh, negative effects, nothing taken away from console wars, and then they stripped the LAN from the mid-season away from us. And I think that's important to, to note here, because that was something that was dedicated prizing for console, and a dedicated event for console that is now removed. And you have this hybridized event taking its place. But this flip-flop here, it demonstrates how swiftly Skillshot and hi -Rez seem to change course regardless of the effects that it has on one of their competitive facets of a Paladin's game, right? Because we do have, we have PC, which is branching into PPL and PML, and then you have console, and it's another competitive facet of the overall game. Um, but to get into the economic side of things, and we'll cover a lot of the financial situation for console in order to highlight the difference in pricing, despite them saying there would be no detrimental effect. Uh, over the course of the, the PCL, and to highlight how the PCL works for the uninitiated, the PCL uh, lasts for a year, right? The 2019 PCL split, um, it's going to have two phases. There's the spring phase, which leads into MSI, and then the fall phase, which will presumably lead into HRX, right? Now, there are four divisions in the PCL. There's PS4 NA, PS4 EU, Xbox NA, and Xbox EU. Four teams in each division for a total of 16. Now, should a team finish first in their respective division at the end of a phase, they make 5K. That's about 1K per player, barring if they have like coach or sub and they want to divvy it up something different. So over the course of the year, you have two splits. So presumably, if one roster can win both splits, uh, both phases, I should say, then presumably they can make 10K, which each player would get 2K, unless otherwise distributed. And it's interesting to note that all previous console war LAN events have hosted a prize pool of about $50,000. And since these events would be console specific, the four top teams from each region, so that total four teams, they would attend the console events, the console wars, and they would have a cut of the cake for that 50k. The, the bottom two teams, I believe, would make a 5k minimum just for attending the LAN. And that's great because of all the effort that they managed to put into the gameplay. There are console teams that scrim upwards six hours, do VOD reviews for upwards six hours. So I think that this is a fair reward to 
to compensate for all that time, for all that dedication. Uh, the only caveat there is, I believe it was DreamHack Atlanta, sources told me. I, I don't know. I was I didn't pay attention for that event. That prize pool was about 100k for a console specifically. But since that's the outlier, we're just going to go with the usual 50k for other console events. Okay. Um, again, they distributed these tournaments distributed their prizes amongst console participants exclusively, and PC had their separate event and payout. Now, this MSI crossplay event offers a 110k prize pool overall. But while that might sound like there's a decent cut of the cake for everyone, uh, it's inherently more difficult for both PCL and PML, but I'm going to focus on PCL here, right? So let's examine the structure, the format of the MSI um, tournament. So you're going to have a play-in bracket, which is the, the preliminary bracket, and then the finals bracket lies at the top. So the preliminary uh, situation, this play-in, consists of the top four console teams, so one per region, uh, the same way that it would work for any console wars event you would also have four pml teams the top two from na the top two from eu so a total of eight all together now they're going to be seated they're going to play their quarterfinal matches then four teams advance semifinal matches then two teams advance and these two teams will play to be either seventh or eighth seed going into uh, the finals bracket so the finals bracket will consist of eight teams as well so this play-in is all teams are fighting for a shot to get at the final bracket. Now, let's take a look at this. Should a PML or PCL team advance as seventh or eighth seed into the finals bracket, that will pit them against seed one and two of the PPL. Yes, we're talking about some of the best teams to ever do it. And casual reminder that NIP are undefeated, I believe, as of this moment. So you can see already how under this structure, it can complicate how PCL teams <clears throat> can approach the prizing in the first place, right? So under the model, as it currently stands, there's only a maximum potential for two console teams to even make it out of the playing stage. All right, and that, that's obviously less than four. There was a dedicated event where four of them would participate. Now, four of them participate in the play-ins, but only two can make it to the final bracket. And why is that important? Well, that's because the real kicker is whoever doesn't make it out of the play-in stage doesn't get a cent. They don't get a single penny for their time and effort that they put into this. Meanwhile, the standard of, of living, so to speak, for console teams before that was 5k minimum for attending their console specific events. Now, that's a little egregious. Some might want to argue and say, well, you know, high risk skill shop, you know, whatever entity pays for your travel and your stay, you know, you get a free vacation. Enjoy yourself. I mean, sure, you, you should be grateful for the fact that they do that, but that doesn't diminish the how much they're undermining a professional circuit that has represented them for a long time right because be it that pcl has only existed since um halfway 2018 i think they only started with a fall phase pcs has been a thing for a while uh, i competed on pcs teams i know this has been there for even before my time so all i'm saying is it's a huge difference it's a huge difference in treatment for a professional circuit that has been here representing paladin's game for quite some time now if teams manage to compete, if a console team manages to get to the final bracket, again, they only get 5K. And if a former console champion would want to make anything comparable to what they're used to making at console-specific events, well, then, again, you're going to have to beat the number one or number two PPL team in order to do it, and that's that's a huge task. You're going from versing other console teams and PML teams, which is kind of like a, a small hill to climb. Anybody can really take a game off of anybody under those circumstances in theory. But then you're talking about teams like NIP, right? And that's a really steep mountain to try to climb. And one slip when you're halfway up there and you're just falling off completely. So again, that's, that's a steep chasm. Right? We're not talking about just pound for pound dealing with your equals. We're dealing with perceived superiors. And we're going to look at these advantages because that's a significant difference in prize pool. You're making nothing unless you get into quarters and you're not making anything compared to what a champion in a console LAN is used to making unless you take whole sets off of teams that their peers can't. Other PPL teams haven't taken games off of like Nip. So, I mean, go figure. I don't know. But... The entire identity of console paladins, it stems from the use of the controller. This is not something that we're uh, unused to. It's it's PS4 and it's Xbox. That's what participates in console wars. I'm sorry, Switch, I don't have a say in that. Um, but PC can pride itself in using mouse and keyboard, right? And I think it's important to look at these distinctions because you're aiming with your thumbs. Also, you know, there's less control here. You're, you're using a stick to do it. So in other words, your, your body is the vehicle, 
but you're using something to adjust how much you're aiming. So in other words, depending on your dead zones and how much you, you are frantic in a moment, how far or close they are, you might be overshooting your aim and trying to correct it. You might overshoot or undershoot again, whereas mouse offers a lot more agency than a controller does, right? You use a mouse, you get to use your arm, you can move from your elbow, you can move from your wrist. More importantly is if you miss a target, you can move slightly. That mouse, there, there's less variance there. Thumb to stick to input, hand to mouse, but the input is on the mouse. So any movement you're doing to the mouse, there's less variance there. There's far more room for precision. And now some people might contend and ar contest or argue, say, well, you know what, you guys have aim assist. But at the LAN events, there's no aim assist. And even were there to be aim assist, that actually throws off aim almost as equally as it helps. Because you could try to aim at one person, and if there are a few people stacked up, it might drag one way or another. You drag on deployables. It's a mess. If you haven't played on console, just play on console. Get yourself acquainted with that. This is, that's another topic for another video, though. Just giving a knife, a nice little debrief, right? So it feels like console is forced to kind of bring a knife to a gunfight, right? It's the inferior input method, in my opinion, and I would say almost through fact. Um, but don't worry, because high res and Skillshot have perceived this disadvantage, and they said outright that console teams, don't be afraid. You too can use mouse and keyboard at our crossplay LAN event. Which would be fine and dandy, but it brings two problems, one of which is a paradox in the first place, because should a console team be able to practice on keyboard, which, by the way, they cannot use regionally, in regional PCL combat, when they're facing other teams in their division, you are not allowed to use keyboard and mouse. So now they're training on control all the time to make sure they can beat their peers, but now they're also going to have to acclimate to a whole new skill set. Some of them have played on PC, that's great, but for those who don't, they have to acclimate to something totally new to them. And now they have to do it to even stand a chance, or, or have a better chance, at teams who also play on PC for the duration of their careers. You're looking at players who are so comfortable on PC that console players would have to literally transcend the bell curve with whatever limited amount of time, maintain practice on keyboard and mouse and their controller just to contend locally and then at the tournaments internationally, I, I don't really know crossplay, whatever we want to call it. So let's say they do make it across that bell curve, and now they've become master race PC players. How is it even console anymore? You literally stripped the identity from one of the leagues that participates, that has represented your game for, dare say, almost a near equivalent amount of time, if not an outright equivalent amount of time. What do you do then? If you do contend with your PML and PPL brethren, but you're no longer console, you might as well draw, join the P PML at that point. Like... So this paradox is really the source, in my opinion, uh, an, an egregious portion of uh, why console circuit members are, are livid, right? It appears to be an inconvenient way to phase out of the console scene almost entirely. And I think another setback that we should acknowledge on the topic of, of being able to use a uh, keyboard and mouse to begin with at the LAN is most notably PS4 players don't even have the option to train on a control versus a PC team in the first place because Sony has an enabled crossplay. And whether that be Sony's fault for not enabling it or maybe Skillshot Hi-Rez have not had the negotiation skills to make it happen, whoever is responsible is kind of irrelevant. The fact is it's not here. It doesn't happen. PS4 teams cannot do it. Granted, some of the higher uh, teams on the spectrum, some of the better performing teams also have either a PC or an Xbox or both in some cases, and therefore they can train. But not every team can do it. So regionally, there's no way to improve the overall health of the system. And this is going to be important coming back into it later. Um, now that we've kind of sorted out the grievances and incongruities that have been highlighted, I think it's imperative that we address some of the arguments that surround uh, the, the, the issue in general, right? So the upping the competition argument. Uh, Rain Day also said it on week eight of the PCL broadcast, I believe. And I'm in agreement with it. I, I'm not going to lie. If this accomplishes anything to, to all the other detriments and backhands that it's giving the console scene, I think I would be interested in seeing how, especially I could see from a spectator perspective, how console teams and PC teams will stack up, right? Whose meta rubs off against who? Who adapts in what ways? Will console meta somehow benefit them in certain matches? Will um, the practice against PC teams manage to uh, up the level of competition over on the console scene? Who knows? And that's an interesting thing that we would be able to study and watch. And as far as we know, the crossplay event is not going to be changed anytime soon. So we'll actually get to see if that happens and how that happens. Um, another argument that I've heard that I want to address is this whole 
hey, it's not a salary, it's not a livable wage, get a real job, that whole shtick, I don't like it. It's kind of as annoying as the if you can't beat them, ban them narrative that people are trying to drive home because, well, it's not real. Uh, the way that this works is people know that it's not a quote-unquote career that pays the bills, right? But it is esports, and it's an entry point. A lot of these people might do it as a hobby. They might be really good at the game, and therefore they decide to compete. There are many reasons that I couldn't give you because I don't know uh, the mind of Shu, the mind of Legacy, the mind of all the other players on all the other teams. I can't tell you what all of their motivations are. But they participate in this environment. They've represented it. They put in time and effort. They scrim. They VOD review. They go over even the most minute portions of gameplay. So to feel like you're being robbed of what little prize pool you were getting, what dedicated monetary reward was there for you, for your efforts, obviously it's going to cause outrage. No one's saying they're going to subsist and live off of a Paladin's console paycheck. That's not the argument here. It's that they're being slighted. They're being treated as if they're less than. And regardless of somebody's opinion as to whether or not console is as superior as PC, it doesn't matter. Because that's a significant portion of the player base as well. That's a significant portion of the representation of Paladin's game. So it's a huge backhand. I also like the idea that people are having where it's like the no pay, no work. And we could tie this into the strike that's been occurring, right? The, the strike that people have been trying to gain traction on where, hey, we're not in agreement with this. We're going to strike so that you don't have a league to begin with. Then I, I would argue that's kind of counterproductive, mind you, because if you do strike, it kind of kind of supports the sentiments where they feel like it's not professional. And so I don't know. There, there's always a way to spin something no matter what you're trying to do to make it a negative against you. So it's something to be wary about. Now, granted, I don't think the strike happened. I don't think it's coordinated enough to happen, to be honest with you. There aren't enough teams that are directly impacted by the prizing where we could achieve that sort of solidarity. The professional PPL and PML players will back up the professional PCL players, but Lower ends of the spectrum, there might be a little bit of uh, unorganized, not being on the same page there. But I do want to see how less pay or less guaranteed or, or more unsecure pricing would impact overall the, the uh, player base to see which professional players stay and go. And I think that's a pretty good segue into the player reactions because we've seen a few different reactions, right? And I'm going to go to each side of the spectrum here. We've seen uh, the likes of Harvey, who have just outright quit. He was a player on Cyclone, uh, Xbox EU. I believe he was the support for their team. And so Fanatics was bumped up from sub to main roster, and they've been playing like that ever since. You've also seen, uh, I th believe it was Wonderful, who tweeted out, he's going to play the duration of this split or, or this phase, and he's going to kind of see where it goes. He's going to see if they reverse course, if they bring back the console wars land, and if not, then he says he's, he might move on to something else. He might quit outright. Then you have players like Shu, who I really admire for his um, staying power, because his approach is going to be, well, I mean, if the console scene is going to be gutted, then I might just take some players and I'm going to go over to uh, make a PML team. And why not? Um, I would say if that's true, because that's what I've heard, if that's true, that's really, in a, I shouldn't say really innovative, but it's a good approach to deal with um, the circumstances that are being kind of dealt out right now, right? It's you spent so much time on this game. Why not use those skills to further your abilities in the same game, just on a different platform? And I mean, if it kind of looks like high res is gutting the console scene anyway, you might as well make the transition uh, as long as you're able. And then we've also seen the likes of Smutney, who is an interesting player in my opinion, because he's played on Xbox, he's played on PC, he's played on PS4, and he's defending it. He's outright been the most proactive in trying to garner a solution, whereas other people are, are venting the incongruities, they're venting their frustrations. Smutney made this whole entire twit longer where he highlighted some of the things that uh, we've discussed above, or before I should say. And he, he detailed the situation that console is in, uh, how they're being treated per, uh, perceivably, and that they want the console wars back and that if anybody agrees with this plight, that they can retweet it, they could support, they could express their agreement or perspective on the situation via Twitter or other methods socially uh, directly to high res maybe, uh, Skillshot as well. And I think that's a really good mentality to have. Now, to get into other player reactions that are not PCL, like, for instance, we have PPL players who consider this move absurd, right? We've had the likes of Cuz Cutie, who had tweeted openly his support of bringing back the, basically having, letting console have its own playground twice a year, right? So that's advocating bringing back console wars for the summer. And then he even mentioned something along the lines of, um, you could take some of the prize pool away from the PC event in order to help fund the console event. So that self-sacrifice is important because not only is that coming from someone who's been at the highest high positions of PPL play or of the professional circuit on PC, but this is also someone who, who's not participating. 
it doesn't necessarily affect him directly. He might have some friends in there so that he might be caring about them, sure, but it shows that he perceives it as another professional circuit, as something that is equivalent, something that has legitimacy and integrity. Speaking of which, I think it's important we get into the meeting that has occurred between uh, Cooper and maybe some other Skillshot members, I don't know who is in there, and a lot of the PCL players who were in there. So there were a few takeaways, right? Um, one thing is that I was told, I wasn't a part of the, the meeting myself, full disclosure, I have multiple sources who were telling me different uh, facets or aspects of what was discussed in the meeting, so I'm going to touch on what stuck out the most to me. So. I was told that it was stated by Cooper that Skillshot doesn't really perceive or deem the PCL a pro league in the same way that it does PPL or PML, right? And I think that this demonstrates how the league, since the league is viewed this way, that it's been put on the back burner. Um, it's obvious to see, right? We see the removal from the console war Summerland. We see a full detriment and many more hurdles to the prizing for console teams to even acquire any. So... This perception doesn't strike me as absurd. It also kind of emphasizes a point where I was making before, where it seems like they were undermining. Uh, to know that they have this opinion outright is actually kind of perfect. It's like the missing puzzle piece. It makes the bigger picture all make sense as to why they've been making some of the moves that they make. Um, and citing why they don't consider it a pro league, they kind of went into this... Um, I don't have a direct quote, but more or less this lack of competition by region or division. And I would say that's a double-edged sword because you look at PS4 EU and you have something that is so competitive that Stush Gaming, who just got their first win off of the third place team, Aaron Mana, they were already taking, they took a, they were the only team to take a map off of Flashpoint who was, uh, who is undefeated in sets, by the way, in uh, PS4 EU, and they're they're the best team at contending them. They do the most against them, even if they don't outright win maps aside from the one time. They they always take Flashpoint to the most difficult perceivable games as a spectator, and I think that's intriguing because that demonstrates competition. You have Flashpoint, a LAN regular, who drop a few points on a map. To Stush, who's the last place. Now, granted, you could easily go over to Xbox NA and cite Retaliation and East Storm and how they seem to be very weak. So there is clearly a lack of competition there. Elevate just dominates. Cats on Mars kind of exists in this space where they're a good team, not quite as good as Elevate, but far and away good enough to keep on demolishing Retaliation and East Storm every time they come into contact with them. Um, or most times, I should say. No, I think it's all the time. They probably run into Elevate three times by now. Never mind. Point is, is they beat them when they come into contact with them. So I can see why they say that. But it's also interesting to keep in mind that this league is receiving more legitimacy, not just from high res or skill shot, not just from all these teams coming in and having more structure in the creation of the PCL, but organizations are coming, right? Off the top of our heads, we can think Elevate, Flashpoint. We have big money esports, even though they're on the lower end of the spectrum. Aerial Arise and PS4U, Onslaught and PS4NA. Organizations are, are becoming more abundant here. They're looking to pick up PCL teams. So it's not very helpful when you have Skillshot, the organizer of leagues and tournaments, sitting here and trying to say, we don't consider them a pro league, maybe semi-pro or amateur, you know, depending on what you're less offended by. <laughs> like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. You should endorse it. And if you're trying to increase the overall level of competition, then I would say start speeding up the process to get the crossplay going on PS4. Put some fire onto Sony, negotiate a deal so that PS4 can actually play against Xbox in a normal setting. And then you could consolidate it like you consolidated PPL, right? You can make the PCL eight teams and it could be the top two from each region. And then how cool would that be if during the normal season you could see Elevate versus Flashpoint and Cyclone versus Heating Up. And these teams who never, never even touch each other outside of a scrim during the regular season play each other before they get to a LAN. That would be immense that would definitely up the level of competition that would definitely up the level of spectator hype when it comes to people who are viewing it on mixer or twitter or whatever they decide to stream it in the upcoming days and months and whatnot so outside of that the last thing i wanted to touch on is somewhere in this meeting it wasn't i don't have the direct quote i'm, I'm definitely paraphrasing a little bit here but it was implied that 
The high-res esports team, whoever publishes those articles, Skillshot doesn't have a direct hand in that. And here's my problem with that, first of all, because there's two issues. The article initially saying two things that were backtracked on, right? No detriment in prizing, no effect on console wars events. Obviously, that wasn't the case. So in other words, this was either a deliberate lie or some level of ineptitude where two people aren't coordinating. And if this was stated somewhere in the meeting that they don't coordinate, the person who develops and controls the leagues and the LAN events not coordinating with the people writing the articles about esports, do I really need to say how egregious that is? That is a level of ineptitude that should not be allowed in any professional circuit anywhere. If you are Skillshot staff and high res staff and you're coordinating a post on esports, tell them the details of the damn tournament. It's not that difficult because now you're going to have situations like this where it looks like you're saying, oh no, we promise you rainbows and unicorns, and then you're throwing shit at them all day. And what does that really do? incite so much outrage from people who have represented the game for such a long time and then you want to wonder why there's so much backlash and then you want to wonder why people get frustrated when you're sitting in the meeting and you're muted half the time saying that you're taking notes that's not really fair to the people who have competed and represented your game on a professional level streamed representing that brand i don't know there's not really much more i can say in the face of that but in conclusion, I would have to say that a majority of the dissent that Hi-Rez and Skillshot are facing, uh, that they've garnered from this entire uh, professional console player scene and player base, I think that is well warranted and deserved. Uh, to essentially publish this false or misleading information, either deliberately or through ineptitude, it's just egregious. Players who've dedicated their enti entire evening, significant portions of time, to become the best that they possibly can could be. They've been shafted. They were assured that their position would be unaffected and then the rug was pulled out from underneath them. And how do you expect people to react under that situation? This abysmal earning potential for the PCL elite moving into MSI is a far cry from the compensation that they're used to. And arguably at a time when the PCL is starting to pick up the traction, right? It feels kind of... Uh, inverted, right? If anything, you should make the argument for something like this back when it was just PCS and Discord and Chaos. But now when the game is so structured and the, and the play looks so refined, now it feels like people are being penalized. And I'm all down for experimenting, right? You want to experiment with crossplay? That's fine. But keep the console wars event as well. Let them have that. One can hope that high res and skillshot take heed from literally PCL, PML, and PPL players, all stating and demanding the return of a proper console event. Because after all this time, console has been plugged into the Paladin scene, and it'd be a damn shame to see high res or skill shot rip the controller literally out of our hand.